and we hope that it, that you can be blessed. Is it okay like that? Is there a problem? No? Okay. Uh, so as I, as I was saying, uh, there are some things that happen in our lives that happened a long time ago with many people. As I always say here, you're not the first one or the last for the things that happen to your life, no matter what it is. Family issue, personal fam, f financial issue, uh, physical issue, okay, mental issue, whatever it is, there, there always there there always be uh, uh, circumstances in our lives that many other people went through, and maybe even worse than you are going through. But we have this privilege, as I, I prayed here in the beginning, we have this privilege of having a true God, a true God, the only true God, by the way. There's no other, there's no other. All the other fake gods. But we have, we know the true God. And this God we know can do anything. And this is exactly what we're gonna talk about today once again. Because we have to take possession of this privilege in our lives. Okay, if people are blessed and some people are, other people are blessed, why can't you be blessed? Okay? Why we see miracles happening in so many people? And why don't miracles happen to you? Or to your family? Why does God hear your prayers? Okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And today we're gonna read and listen to the story about the woman with the blood issue in the Bible. The woman with the blood issue. It's a beautiful, beautiful story, okay? It's a book, of, it's, this story is so beautiful that the three gospels, uh, Mark, Luke, and Matthew have this story. But this story, is more emphatic, emphatically uh, demonstrated or shown in the book of Mark. The book of Mark is the most simple of the Gospels. Luke is the more accurate, I mean, not more accurate, but it's, 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 uh, Luke is a doctor. He, he did a, 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 sim, uh, a summary of Jesus' events in a way that is really wonderfully made. The book of Luke. Matthew is a, is a gospel for the Jews, or the gene genealogy of Jesus, a lot of laws and all, 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 the, all, the, uh, all the background of, uh, of, the, of, the, of Jewish people. It is on the book of Matthew. Mark is for the common people. So it's, it's, a more, it's more simpler. But in this aspect, in this story, the book of Mark is the only one who has detailed, detailed information about what happened to this woman, okay? So let's go to the book of Mark, chapter five, verse 25. It's on page 711, page 711 in our Bibles, okay? Open your Bible, please. Uh, you have a Bible in our pew, pews, so you get a Bible there, okay? And open on page 711. Did you find it? Page 711. So let's go from verse... Chapter 5, Mark 5, verse 25. It goes like this. Let's, go, let's start from 24. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressured around him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, around Jesus. Okay? And a woman was there who had been subject to to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors 
He had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak or garment, okay? Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from his suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered. You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him, the whole truth, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Amen? Amen. Uh, some aspects, some information that you might not know about, about that, about this event, that is going to help you to see what we need sometimes to do in order to be blessed in order for miracles to happen like it happened to this woman right you know this woman had a very bad issue she had a blood issue and if you are if you are a man and you are married you know what happens to women if you are a woman you know better than anybody else what happens to you guys, to you, you know? And, man, I, I, feel, I felt really sorry for this woman, believe me. Because I, I tried to go into her life, you know what I mean? To feel what she felt, man. Imagine you, man, you, if you were that woman. Imagine you. Twelve years. Twelve years, man. That flow of blood never stopped. Today we have tampon, whatever, blah, blah, right? We have all these things. Back then, sponge, I don't know what even they had, piece of cloth, whatever. But one thing you don't know, maybe you don't know about, and that is very, very bad. She was alienated, separated from the public. Do you know that? Yes, yeah, she was considered impure, impure because of her blood flow. Yes, women in that time when they had their period, they could not go to church for the whole week or how long it takes. They couldn't go. They couldn't be around anybody. During the, it's a good, it's a good time. It's a good thing because that time the women rested. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. They had to be away from everybody, right? from their husbands, from their family. So God knew how to do in a way, you know, a moment that could be, you know, to rest a little. But there was, there was a thing. If you were in your period, away from everybody, mainly from the temple, mainly from the church, or from the synagogues, no way, man, no way. You had to be away from everything. So imagine that woman for 12 years, she could not interact with people. People didn't want to be around her because she was impure. And if you, if she touched somebody, that person became impure. You know that? So she could not touch maybe her husband, her friends, her family. It was a, mis a miserable life. Miserable, miserable, miserable life. And we know by the, by the text that before she got sick, she was a very dynamic woman because she had possessions. She had money. So she was a dynamic woman. And she lost all the money, almost all the money, with the doctors, as we, we see here, trying to get better. And she never got better. She lost the money. 
and she even got worse. But one thing that, you know, what I love about this text is the interaction between God the Father and God the Son, our Lord, beautiful Lord Jesus Christ. I love to see how beautiful their communion is, okay? Remember, Jesus, what happened here, you don't know this, but before that woman came, J J J Jairus, or Jairus, whatever you say in English, Jairus is, is a man of the synagogue, okay? He was a leader in the synagogue, and his daughter got sick. 12 years old, she got sick. And Jairus went there to talk to Jesus to heal her daughter. So Jesus was on the way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, okay? And a crowd was, of course, following Jesus. Crowd, touching him. Everybody begging for him to pray for them, okay? Anyway, so he was there on the way. And that woman, she knew about Jesus Christ. She heard about him. She might have no people who had been healed by him, amen? And she said, he is a true man of God. He is a prophet. He is a, a true rabbi. Rabbi means master. And I'm not going to lose my opportunity. Amen? I'm going to go for it. I know I'm impure, but I'm going to hide myself. And I'm going under the crowd. And you know what? I cannot even talk to him. She cannot. She could have been killed. She could have been stoned to death if they knew that she was impure in the middle of the crowd, trying to talk to the rabbi. You know that? How dangerous that was for her. She could have lost her life because she could not be around people, in, in, not even close to a rabbi. No way, a priest, no, a pure woman, no, 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 no exception. She could have been killed, stoned to death. But she had the faith, amen, in God. She knew that God healed. God could make her live again. God could heal her in spite of all the difficulties, in spite of all the problems. She knew that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, could heal her, amen? And she was going to go for no matter what, no matter what. And the good thing, the most beautiful thing is that God the Father hid her from her son. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Because Jesus knew everything. But sometimes God the Father, this is wonderful, I love this one. God the Father, sometimes in the Bible you see that God the Father hid some things from his son. Okay? Because she got there, close to Jesus Christ, she got to the crowd, you know, went into the crowd, and she said, well, I cannot talk to him. I cannot ask him to heal me. No, I'm not of this disease. So I'm going to just touch his cloak or his garment. And I might be healed. No, I hope to be healed. When, but he's a holy man. And she did. Praise God. She did. She went there. And begging God not to be, for, she, for her not to be seen. And she went, went there and crowded, crawling, crawling, and chug. And right immediately, the power, the healing power, like happened to me, burned her. <laughs> and healed her. Amen? Amen? Right there, man, right there in the middle of the crowd, she was completely healed, and she felt she had been healed. Praise God. In that moment, Jesus Christ you know, God the Father hid from him, right? So he said, what, what happened here? Somebody touched me. <laughs> Somebody touched me. <laughs> and, the, and, and the disciples said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Everybody here is touching you. But I said, no, somebody touched me and power came out of me. You know, somebody touched me and power came out of me. And he didn't know who it was. 
Because God the Father had not revealed to him. Amen. He was looking around and said, who was, who was it? Who, who had this faith in me, in the Son of God, that nobody here has. Nobody, but this, this person has. Who was this person? And he was looking around, looking around, looking around. And finally, she felt that somehow she would be found out, she should be seen, and she came forward. And, and then he saw that was the woman. Amen? He saw that person that had been hid from him for a while. And he saw, it's a woman. <laughs> it's not a man, it's a woman. He said, man, he just said, she has the faith, man. She has the faith. And my father hid from me to show me that people have the faith in his son. Amen? Because God, Jesus Christ, is the Word. The Word. Jesus is the Word. This is the Word written, written Word. Jesus is the living Word. Everything created on earth was created by the Word. Amen? The Word. This is why words have power. Did I tell you? Words have power. Even our words have power. Don't curse people. Don't curse your family, your, your spouses, your parents. Don't curse anybody because our words have power. Imagine Jesus' words. Amen? Okay? Yeah. Okay? You bless. When you bless, people are blessed. Okay? Uh, yesterday I was talking about politics with my wife. I cursed the president. They said, no, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. I said, yeah, I asked God to forgive me. I did. I said, God, no, blessed be him. Amen? He has to be blessed, man. If you want to be blessed, he has to be blessed. No matter if I like him or not, it doesn't matter. He has to be blessed. Amen? So that's the way it is. We don't fight with, with rage. We don't fight with anger. We fight with love and prayer. Amen? That's the way it is. Love is everything. In prayer is the key. So God put in our lives the power of the faith. The power of his words are in our, in our mouth. So you, you bless your children. You bless your children. My children are healed. My children are saved by God's mercy in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Say this. Believe it. Believe it. Say Pray and don't lose faith. Don't lose faith. As that woman never lost faith. She never lost faith. And she went all through those struggles and fights. She never went back. She was so determined to, to gain the miracle that she went, out, went after it and she got it. If she got it, I get it. Amen? Amen. If she got it, you got it. You get it. Amen? Amen? So, whatever you have in mind, your dreams, they have, they have been fulfilled. Whatever you have in mind, that there is God's uh, permission, because I know God's will. It is God's will. If it's something good, it's God's will. Take possession of your dream coming true, whatever it is, whatever deliverance, healing, financial success, whatever, family together, salvation, whatever it is. Radical change, radical change to somebody, to me, or to whoever it is. God is for you. Amen? God is with you. Uh, you know, uh, it is so beautiful when you see the way that God sometimes wants us to go through. People say, ah, oh, but God can do anything, God can heal. Yeah, he can do, but sometimes we have to do our part and do it well. <laughs> sometimes he demands us to behave and to act and to live. One thing I know, I, I, tell, I told you last Sunday, when David wrote the Psalm 42, beautiful Psalm. When you get home, read it, meditate upon it. But one thing, it is emphatically in the Bible. 
If you want to be a successful man or woman, a successful anything, anything, be righteous. Be righteous. What it means? Live the Bible. Live the Bible. Pay the price. Live the Bible. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't adulterate. Don't change your mind first. Ideas. Let the word of God suck in your mind, in your, your brain. Be a changed person for God's glory. Amen? Be a child of God. Be a true born person. And God will make you free. God will set you free. And God will give you victory. Because that's the way God does. When you are righteous, nothing can hold you. Nothing. Nothing can hold you. When you're righteous, God does whatever it is, whatever it takes to make you more than successful. In whatever you do. But we have to do a part. Some, some, sometimes we need. Some people, God, God just heals and does his miracles. But some people, God demands you to be righteous. That's where it is. But if you are right, no matter what, if you are righteous, if you do the right thing, God will bless you. He bless you lots. Okay? And, uh, you know, uh, you know, Jesus Christ came to her in verse 34. Mark 5, 34. And Jesus was really happy with that woman. He was touched by that woman. Jesus Christ was touched by that woman. By her step of faith. And he called her daughter. You know what called her? You know, when, when I pray and I feel that Jesus calls me son, I cry. Man. I do. He called, you know, he called me. Who, who am I to be called son of? Who are you to be called daughter? But he calls you daughter. He calls you son, Michael. Oh, 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 and Manuel. Son of God. Son. I love you. Just when he called her daughter means that she had been healed and she had gained her salvation to heaven. Because all the children of God go to heaven. Amen. Amen. She got two miracles. The physical miracle and the spiritual miracle. Amen? She was born again. She was born again, right there. Because of her faith. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Go in peace. The Shalom Adonai. The peace of the Lord. That transcends anything. If you want to be happy, and really happy, have the peace of the Lord. You go to bed, nothing against you. You get home from work, from whatever, nothing against you. The best thing in life is you get home and you feel the peace of the Lord. Amen. You put on, as I said to you before, impregnate your home, your home with the worship songs. Amen. Put some worship songs. And sing for the Lord. Sing with the Lord. Let the, your environment, your ambience, be filled with God's presence through worship. Amen? That's what we do. Okay? When you want to feel God's presence in your car, when you drive, put on CD. I have CD playing in my car. Okay. Put on CD or a radio. And enjoy yourself with the Lord, in the Lord. Amen? Uh, remember two things before we finish. Jairus was there in the crown. Jairus saw that Jesus healed that woman before he healed his daughter. And his daughter was 12 years old. The same time that she was sick. Okay? She had a disease for 12 years. And her, his daughter was 12 years old. <laughs> and they were both healed on the same day. No, both healed on the same day. Jairus' daughter 
and that woman and other woman they don't give the name so that shows that God doesn't care if you are in the port of the man as Jairus God healed him God helped him or if you're somebody nobody knows both are important but Jairus he didn't call Jairus son he didn't call Jairus son Jesus did not call Jairus son but he called that other woman daughter amen, amen. so the most important thing is not to be important among men no the most important thing is to be important before God amen that what, that's what it counts to be important before the Lord uh, conclusion Jesus said someone has touched me right I know that virtue has gone out of me virtue of power the woman's genuine faith genuine means real we have to have the same faith folks don't doubt when you pray don't doubt when you ask the Lord to heal you to to to, to give you victory whatever you need don't doubt that's what Peter says there in his book don't doubt you have to be like that woman be really to have the genuine faith a true faith okay uh, this text teaches these things grace and mercy she was graced by God, by Jesus Christ, and mercy, because she could have been killed. Even if she, if, even after being healed, things could have been worse. But Jesus Christ touched her. He said, "Go in peace." Completely gone. Nobody could do anything. Nobody could could accuse her of anything. She had been healed, and touched by the Master. Amen? Amen. So grace and mercy. Faith and the need to act. You need to act, folks. You need to act. Fast and pray. If something that you need, fast. Fast. I said to you before, how do, you, do I fast? Start. Start by fasting. Maybe in the morning. From no breakfast. On lunch. Well, ask the Lord to help you. Okay? But fast and pray. Some things on with fast and prayer remember that fast and prayer if you don't know fast you gotta fast <laughs> amen? amen if we have never fast we have to learn to fast some things only through fast and prayer also you have to be a live testimony of God okay as I was talking yesterday with my stepdaughter Victoria about that about her testimony in her school. I was talking to her. I know it is not easy. But I was trying to show her that it will have to be a testimony, a true testimony of, my, of our faith, whatever we are. Amen? Amen? School, work, and street, whatever we are. Okay? My wife got the green card. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and we went to the restaurant to commemorate and right there we hold we held hands and we prayed and prayed for a good time and people just keep on keep on watching us <coughs> we don't care we prayed for a good time and crying it was a wonderful moment that we were there in the restaurant praying saying God thank you thank you thank you thank you and that's the way we all should be amen don't be ashamed of the God you serve. Don't be embarrassed with the God you believe. But the opposite, be proud and be sure that God loves you more than anything, anybody else. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let's pray and let's go. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful message. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We, we thank you, Lord, because... We know that we have to move the way